Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. When Wild Kingdom debuted in the early 1960s, handling and training animals to perform were common in many zoos. But today, animals serve as wildlife ambassadors to educate rather than to just entertain. These ambassadors have been hurt in the wild and would not have survived without human interaction. Trained professionals bottle feed and foster the animals back to health, and the animals become imprinted on their human caregivers. Wild Kingdom showed generations of people the majesty of our animal ambassadors and helped us care about them. When you care about something, you become committed to saving it. And that's how we all succeed in the Wild Kingdom. So sit back and relax and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha. Hello. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Chakma country is the story of the Chakma baboon. He has many homes. One of the most beautiful is the coastal area of South Africa. Here along the southern coast of the African continent, life is easy. Few animals dare challenge this dog-faced baboon, a fearless fighter with powerful jaws. Because of his superior intelligence, the Chakma has learned to adapt to all conditions. He can survive along the coast or in the remote Rocky Mountain ranges. Although he spends most of his life on the ground, he's an expert climber. He's also learned to survive with other animals like the impala antelope in the dry semi-deserts of the interior. These are all parts of Chakma country. In these areas, he must live with the elephant, the lion, the cheetah, and of course the leopard. Survival is more difficult, and the dangers are many. Jim and I explored all of Chakma country. We traveled north along this beautiful coast, Leaving Marlin in the Land Rover on the uplands, I head toward the beach. I soon spot a number of Chakma baboons relaxing in the sun and foraging for grubs and edible marine life in the rocks. This young baboon, normally a vegetarian, is eating a piece of fish. A strange creature approaches. A young penguin, storm battered and covered with oil. Before he has a chance to investigate the stranger, another baboon comes over to play. No time for food now. They start their game, and the penguin finds the beach too crowded. As usually happens, the chase ends up in a good wrestling match. This is too much for the penguin. Now the chakma is starting to pick on him. retreats to the safety of the sea. Moving inland from the coast, 
I spot another youngster playing in a freshwater pool. It's not long before a second young chakma sees him. In a flash, they're off on their favorite game of follow the leader. At the height of the excitement, a crow stops by for a drink at the pool. The bird seems to have an injured wing, otherwise he wouldn't stay around. Sensing that the crow can't get away, the young baboon really starts to pester him. Finally, the young baboon decides to take a rest. His playmate has found a young crocodile. Those powerful jaws can give him a bad bite. But Junior can't leave well enough alone. <laughs> Junior better watch out. Ouch! He bit him right on the tail. I stopped farther inland where a larger troop was feeding on an upland plateau. The bulk of their diet consists of grass and they eat an amazing quantity. They love to munch on the roots and stems which lie just beneath the surface. When not eating, baboons spend much of their time grooming, removing dirt from one another's fur or from their own coats. Grooming is not only a necessity for the chakma, but it's also an important social custom. It's a sign of friendship, a way of showing respect to elders and of demonstrating love and affection to the very young. The troop is highly organized under the leadership of tough, dominant males. They protect the females and the young. If they're threatened by a predator, the dominant males will attack, risking their lives to save the troop. They also see that everybody else stays in line. Suddenly, there's a movement in a nearby thicket. An old leopard is prowling around, hoping to catch a stray baboon. seen by two dominant males. They are reinforced by other males. The cat decides they're too much to tackle.
I followed the troop as they left the seacoast. One youngster explores a tree at the top of the hill. An eagle owl is resting up after a hard night's hunting. There'll be no rest for him now. The young Chakma, his curiosity satisfied, hurries off to join the rest of the troop. As the baboons move farther inland, they come across a python. Most animals avoid snakes. However, these baboons seem interested, and they're not afraid. The python's extremely dangerous. He'll try to grab the chakma in those wicked jaws, then crush him with his body. A female and baby nervously follow the action. This is no place for youngsters. They continue their journey, feeding on the way. Nearby, a heron intently watches the troop. And sure enough, one of the youngsters comes over for a closer look. One chakma, it seems, can get into more mischief than a barrel of monkeys. But he'd better watch out. That bill can put out his eye. Junior decides it's much safer to play with his brothers. Life is easy for the chakmas on the lush sea coast. But as I moved deeper into Chakma country, I found it was a different story. In the dry areas of the interior, he must live with larger animals. He's thinner and his fur is coarser. There's less food for him here and less water too. All the animals gather at the few water holes. The zebra, the kudu, the lordly giraffe and the mighty elephant. Here the very young cling closer to mother for protection. There's more competition for the precious drops of water and those who can't get near the pool must dig for their own or drink carefully to avoid falling in the mud. This mother Chakma has really got her youngster where she can keep an eye on him. After they have finished drinking, the younger baboons like to roughhouse. The dominant male watches over them. They're noisy, but they don't seem to disturb the elephants who come to drink and take a cooling mud bath. The baboons have learned to get along with elephants, although sometimes it can be a little unpleasant. Baby wants to take a look at those huge animals, but his older brother decides he'd better not get too close to the elephants. It's better if he plays with someone his own size. Playtime's over, and baby gets a ride home, Chakma style. With all the crowding, it's surprising there is so little friction between the chakma and the other animals. Sometimes males of the same species will fight. But usually everyone takes turns. The eland drinks, 
then gives up his place to the larger giraffe. It's a long way down for a short drink of water. When sable bulls fight, they're given a wide berth. Now it's the Impala's turn to drink. They mingle peacefully with the Chakmas. Each depends on the other for protection. For killers hunt here, where animals drink. The Impala has a keen sense of smell, the Chakma good eyesight. Again the plover cries. All the animals are on the alert. The lions are hungry. Giraffe escapes. In the drier regions of Chakma country, the game of survival is played more seriously than it is along the lush coastline of South Africa. Here, Chakma must be alert at all times. We decided to test how alert he was one day at Wanky National Park in Rhodesia. We headed off a troop of baboons that are on their way to a water hole. We want to find out what happens when they see this leopard skin. Will they be afraid or realize it's just a skin? When it's pulled out into the open, Ranger Harry Cantle thinks they'll panic. I can put some life in our leopard by jerking this string when the baboons walk by. We use a long string to get as far away as possible. Now to watch their reactions. Immediately they can tell something's wrong. They don't know what it is, but they're on the alert. chances. But when it's right out in the open, they're smart enough to see through our trick. Then they pay little attention to the skin as they go off to the water hole. The big tuskers are easy going. Nobody bothers them. And they usually don't bother the small animals. They let them drink in peace. Today, a young bull is feeling his oats. He warns me too then goes back to show the Chakma once again who's boss. <laughs> 
At the old water hole, when you take a bath, no one minds if you sink. <laughs> and if you itch, scratch it. But it's not all comedy here. As the elephants move off, I see vultures gathered in a tree. That means there's been a kill. The lions, with full bellies now, are sleepy, and the animals back at the water hole are in no danger. The elephant, of course, is seldom in danger. Few animals dare challenge him. It'll be several hours before these predators are hungry again. Meanwhile, all is peaceful in Chakma country. Some vultures are getting ready to clean off the leftovers when one of the lions sees them. The lion wants to keep some for later. This is all right with Chakma. When a lion has food, Chakma is safe. I was some miles away watching the action at another water hole. One of the males starts acting strangely, as if he senses danger. Then in the distance, a female leopard and her cub appear. A tortoise tries to get away, but not before the cub checks him out. While the mother stops for a drink of water at a small spring, the cub spots something. Three guinea fowl eating in the undergrowth. The hunt is on. He takes his prize back to show mother. But a solitary Chakma who's wandered away from the troop is feeding nearby and has caught her attention. So far, the baboon hasn't seen her. Slowly but inevitably, the age-old drama of the hunted and the hunter unfolds. The drama ends, but life continues. The past soon forgotten, the troop returns, and peace reigns again in Chakma country. The baboon must employ all of his alertness, his cunning, and his superior intelligence to escape the many hazards ever present in Chakma country. As we traveled through this land we call Chakma country, we were continually impressed with the complexity of the baboon's fascinating social life. The highly organized hierarchy of the dominant males, the leaders of the troop, the subtle discipline and the gentle care given to the babies by their mothers, the carefree playfulness of the young, always within the troop's ever-present shadow of security. It's no wonder that their social life is being studied by scientists from all over the world for possible insights into man's own behavior. And it's no wonder, considering Chakma's intelligence, that he's winning the fight against man's invasion of his territory. He's the one animal that we can be sure will always be present to make Chakma country a fascinating part of the Wild Kingdom. <laughs> Thank you.
The company with health insurance for people of all ages has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Like what you saw? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com. Mutual of Omaha. Protect your kingdom.